Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all in fun, no fluff. So let's get right to it. Today, I want to show you kind of a cool sound design trick. And all you need for it is a couple of tracks and an echo type delay. So this trick doesn't work with any delay. For example, you can't use re-delay for this. But for today, I'm going to show you a plugin that does work, that is also free, and that is the Valhalla Freak Echo plugin. It's a great plugin, sounds awesome, and it's free, so make sure you get it. And we can also resize it by dragging on this little triangle in the corner. So let's make it nice and big, and let's also float it. And so with the delay on our track one, I'm going to hold option to disable the master parent scent on this track. And instead, I'm going to just drag it to my second track and set its volume to unit again. I'm gonna right click on the record arm button of my second track and go to record output stereo. And I'm going to also call this something like, I don't know, yoinks. And I'm going to arm this track. And just because I'm fancy, let's also bring in a spectrograph and a spectral analyzer. And as you can see, even though I have no sound going through this plugin right now, there's a little bit of noise. And if I bring the mix up to 100 and also bring the feedback to 100, we get a little tone. We are getting basically our delay to self oscillate right now. So what? It's a square wave, big whoop. But let me show you what kind of cool stuff we can do to this. But since things are about to get crazy, I'm also gonna add a limiter to this track. So right click on the effects, developers, cocos, and let's just put real limit on this track. So now that we're getting this delay to self oscillate, I can adjust the delay to slow down or speed up my self oscillation. And obviously as we increase the delay time, the self oscillation gets slower and the pitch goes down. I'm also gonna turn down these filters. We don't really need them. Ooh, that's kind of a lot of action suddenly. and we get a nice little bass at around 14 milliseconds, which is kind of cool. You may have noticed also some aliasing happening earlier. We're doing sound design, so we don't really care that there's aliasing, but we can always right click on this track, go to chain oversampling and oversample at 192 or something. You'll still get some aliasing. And again, that's not really a problem here. If anything, it's kind of desired. So what I can do now is just start recording on my second track. And let's start with our tone. So as we go up, the pitch goes down. And if we go down, pitch goes up. And if we go further up, we start to get this kind of rhythmic wobble action happening. Maybe we can bring up the filter a little bit. And then as we go anywhere above kind of a quarter of a second, we almost get a loop sound going. And I can do something like this. So I made kind of a movement on the delay and then I went back to the top value and that way we get a one second loop that's based on the movements that we did. Let's do it one more time. And I can also just gradually bring this down. And as we go up and down, we get these sort of like ascending and descending tones that may not be in any kind of specific key, but they are great for kind of creating transitional effects for your songs. And I'll show you later how I kind of use that. Another thing that this plugin lets us do is to shift the frequency of our delay. So with our delay set to a static number, I can begin to shift the frequency up. And this is right now in stereo. You can just click on it to make it mono, but I like the stereo kind of more. So the pitch is now kind of gradually going up or we can go to a negative value. 
and our pitch begins to slowly go down. And the higher the frequency, the faster this transition will happen. So endless hours of fun. And of course, I can just very quickly assign these to a couple of knobs on my MIDI controller. So let's wiggle the shift parameter and then go up here to param and learn. And I'll give one of my knobs on my MIDI controller a wiggle, hit okay. And let's do the same thing with the delay. Just give it a wiggle, param, learn, wiggle another knob, hit enter. And now I can just use my knobs to work with both of these in real time. And we also don't need to record any automation or anything because all of this is being recorded onto our second track in real time. And of course you can just record the first track, but then when you go to play it back, your delay will be set at 100% feedback and you will blow your ears out every single time. Yet another thing we can do is, again, one more time, I can give this shift parameter a wiggle. And this time I'll go to param and go to parameter modulation slash MIDI link. Let's choose an LFO and let's set it to square. So this is kind of a fun little sound. And now if I adjust the strength, obviously the offset between these two numbers changes. And if I change the baseline, I can move this span around. Let's also make this a little faster, maybe like eight hertz or something like that. Ooh. Kind of an alien Morse code type of thing. And you can do the same thing to the delay parameter, but I much prefer to just control that on my own. So tons of fun to be had and whenever you're done doing your recording you just bring the feedback down and the self oscillation goes away very quickly. Let's stop the recording. And so obviously this is right now a bunch of incoherent shit. But what do you say if y'all watch an ad and I quickly go through this and find some cool sounds. So see you in a second. So all right, so basically I went through the track and I created a bunch of extra tracks below my track. And I started to take my favorite sounds and put them in certain categories. So we got like some tones out of this. We have some kind of descending transition effects. We got some loops. And with these loops, since we know the length is always going to be a second, what I can do is just go to any point in this loop and cut it from here and then press J to open the jump window. And I'm gonna go plus zero, 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 one to go forward exactly one second on my timeline, trim it there, glue it and loop it. And it will always be a seamless loop. Of course we have ascending tones. We got some effects type sounds. Ooh. Right there, as you can see, we got almost a sound like a kick. Let's cut it and remove the fade and let's kind of move it forward right on the onset of the transient. Something like this, give it a little fade. And again, I can glue this and loop it. So hopefully you get the picture. And then once you have some of your favorite sounds, you can you know create libraries out of these and then use them in your compositions. So for example, I got a project here and the intro sounds like this. So we go from like a spacey kind of intro to like full blast, you know, bass and drums and everything. But the in between is kind of dry, but I grabbed this kind of like ascending tone that I created. 
And now what I can do is use this as a transition. And of course on its own, it sounds kind of dry. But I can always using another free Valhalla plugin called Supermassive, give it a little bit of a character, give it some reverb. Very nice. Of course, you can grab some of the tones that you create and make synths and such with them. A bass wobble that you can again sample. You can also use these as kind of wavetables and wavetable synthesis to get tones that are similar to our basic wave shapes, but not exactly. It gives it that analog, undefined, imperfect feel. You can use these loops for your songwriting, all sorts of things like that. And I'm gonna kind of massage some of these sounds a little bit more, get the loops perfect, maybe do some basic EQs and stuff like that. And then I will release this as a library for free for all of you to download. So when I do that, the link for that goes in the description, but I'm busy and above and beyond using my sounds, you know, just go and grab a delay, just experiment for yourself, create your own sounds. It's a lot of fun. And of course, you know, none of these pitches are really exact. They're not in tune. And we can always tune them with like an auto-tune plugin or something like that. But don't really be thinking in terms of notes. We're basically painting with sound at this point. So we're going up, we're creating these expressive ascending and descending tones or one-shot samples that we can then put in a musical context for a little bit of extra flavor. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of stuff. And if you do, leave me a comment below so I can make more. Thanks for watching. A quick shout out to Larry, one of my viewers who had this shirt made for me. I think it's awesome. I really love it. Thank you, Larry. And if you like the work I do, you can always make me a shirt or you can just support me by one-time donations through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will also be in the description. Otherwise, just watching my videos and subscribing really helps. I got about 200 of them, so knock yourself out. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.